uh, uh, today I will uh, I will show you how we combine the flow cytometry and single cell sequencing techniques uh, to depict uh, how immune responses in patients uh, with uh, COVID-19 develop. So to give you just a, 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 a little background, uh, so SARS-CoV-2 is a, a single strand RNA virus uh, belonging to the coronavirus family, uh, and in particular to the subgenus of, of uh, Serbicovirus. And uh, as you can see here in this uh, phylogenetic tree, uh, uh, we have uh, highlighted in colors uh, the um, uh, seven coronaviruses that can infect humans. And uh, uh, below here in, uh, uh, in blue, uh, uh, we have um, uh, four uh, coronaviruses belonging to the alpha uh, and beta uh, uh, genuses that uh, uh, cause common cold, so mild pathology, and up here instead uh, uh, beta coronaviruses of the lineage B and C, uh, which uh, have emerged in the last uh, 20 years. We, uh, that, um, can cause uh, or have caused uh, uh, epidemic and pandemic diseases like uh, SARS-CoV-1 in the early 2000s, MERS and SARS-CoV-2 in the last couple of years. And uh, uh, in this cartoon on the right, instead you see the uh, most uh, uh, immunogenic proteins of the virus. So especially the spike and the nucleoprotein, but also the, the matrix protein that uh, uh, per se is not really monogenic, but is very abundant and then uh, uh, it becomes immunogenic for this reason. Um, normally, uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection uh, occurs without symptoms or with uh, mild symptoms. And uh, uh, when it's symptomatic, it causes the coronavirus uh, uh, disease 19, COVID-19, which uh, uh, is an influenza-like illness that can eventually progress uh, to interstitial pneumonia, uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and eventually death. And the uh, mortality rate right now is around 2%. The two most relevant risk factors are advanced age. In indeed, uh, as you can see, the uh, people that are uh, more uh, susceptible to, to severe disease and death are people over 50 years of age and also comorbidities, and in particular, uh, cardiovascular diseases and hypertension and uh, metabolic diseases are uh, uh, relevant risk factors. Uh, what is uh, uh, a good news is that uh, infection and hospitalization rates are uh, uh, reduced uh, uh, upon uh, uh, the um, vaccination campaign has started. Um, sorry, let's see if I can move this out. Okay. Uh, so, and here I'm showing uh, what's going on in Italy. So these two green curves uh, show the, uh, the uh, detected cases of infection, of SARS-CoV-2 infection and uh, hospitalization rates. And as you can see in the last two years, and as you can see here, we can see the peaks of, of the different waves of the, of the pandemic. And uh, uh, what I did here was to overlay uh, the the curve of uh, uh, the vaccination rate in Italy that now has, has reached about uh, 65, 70%. And what is interesting is that uh, uh, the, the rise of the, uh, uh, the, the number of vaccinated people corresponded to um, a drop in the uh, infection cases. And apparently also it prevented this new wave of infection uh, to be to, to reach the same height of, of the previous ones. So get vaccinated. Um, SARS CoV 2 infection uh, uh, usually is resolved in a few weeks, uh, normally in 10, 20 days. Uh, there, is, uh, there isn't any more any replication competent virus. Uh, still, uh, sometimes in, in, in a um, proportion of the infected people, it can cause disease and also a severe disease. 
And uh, this is apparently uh, due to the fact that uh, SARS-CoV-2 is very efficient uh, in evading the, the type 1 interferon mediated response by uh, the innate immune system. And so what it happens is that at the beginning, uh, the innate immune system cannot recognize the, the virus that has infected the host. So the, the, the virus keeps uh, replicating and accumulates uh, uh, until a certain point when uh, it becomes visible to the innate immune system. And at this point, the innate immune system tries to, to, to catch up the, the, all this uh, viral load by producing uh, a lot of inflammatory cytokines. And uh, this results also in, uh, uh, um, uh, let's say, suboptimal activation of the adaptive immunity. And uh, keep in mind that uh, often all the, uh, the, the pathological conditions in, in severe COVID are due more to this uh, excess of inflammation rather than uh, the infection of the virus itself. Uh, so it has been uh, found and, and demonstrated that uh, uh, coordinated adaptive immune in response, so coordinated uh, B and T uh, lymphocytes responses uh, are uh, correlating best with infection control resolution. And uh, uh, it seems that uh, especially T lymphocytes are, uh, are relevant in this context because uh, uh, it has been shown that patients that uh, lack uh, uh, B lymphocytes, either because of a genetic or therapeutic reason, uh, can control the infection. Uh, while there are a few uh, reports, including uh, uh, some observation we did, that people that do not develop a T cell response actually uh, can die uh, from the disease. And uh, uh, this is uh, a, a relevant uh, piece of, uh, uh, of literature where um, uh, that was published by the group of uh, uh, Shane Crotty and Alessandro Setti in La Jolla, where they measured uh, a lot of variables, uh, immunological variables in uh, uh, hundreds of patients. And, and then they put in correlation, uh, they correlated all uh, um, all these variables and uh, uh, verified uh, how this uh, uh, was uh, uh, reflecting on the outcome of the disease. And uh, uh, sorry, I have to, to move again. This stuff here, I don't know how to move, oh, okay. And, um, so uh, essentially, in, this is a correlogram, so a, a lot of co covariates that are correlated uh, each other. And uh, in blue, you have a positive correlation and red a negative correlation. Inside each square, there is also the, the statistical significance of this correlation. And I would like to drive your attention on the last row of this correlogram, where there is the correlation with the peak disease, so the, the, the severity of the disease. And as you can see here, uh, uh, in the region that corresponds to coordinated uh, CD4 and CD8 T cell responses or CD4 T cell responses uh, with antibody production, we have a very nice negative correlation with disease severity. And actually, the um, uh, let's say the, the most negative correlation uh, is uh, uh, with uh, an effect or response by CD8 T cells, suggesting that uh, uh, these uh, uh, T cells, these uh, T lymphocytes are uh, uh, relevant in the uh, immune response to the viral infection. So how did we contribute to the, to the field? So actually, when we started this work, uh, uh, there was already something known on, uh, on the immune response uh, to, the, to the infection, but uh, uh, the knowledge about uh, how the, the, the immune response uh, developed uh, uh, over time was still quite, uh, uh, quite limited. Uh, so what we did was to integrate uh, uh, flow cytometry and single cell uh, sequencing uh, techniques uh, together also with uh, uh, serological analysis and, and antibody measurements to um, uh, um, let's say to, to see how the immune response uh, developed in patients with uh, with severe uh, with mild and severe COVID nineteen, and actually 
this work has been uh, very recently published on, on science immunology. So uh, you can eventually uh, find more details uh, uh, over there. So this was our experimental approach. We took uh, uh, peripheral blood from healthy donors and, and patients with mild or, uh, or severe COVID-19, uh, both during the infection and uh, uh, some weeks after the infection was resolved. And we performed some extensive uh, uh, phenotyping by multiparametric flow cytometry and single cell RNA sequencing. And also we looked at clonality uh, by uh, single cell TCR sequencing. So here from each single cell uh, we analyzed, we had unmatched the information on the transcriptome, but also on the sequence of the T cell receptor that for T cells, uh, as you may know, is uh, like um, an identity card. And today, obviously, I will focus mostly on the flow cytometry data since this is a flow cytometry course. Uh, so we wanted, uh, uh, first of all, to identify the, the main uh, immune cell population in, in, in the peripheral blood of, of the patients. And uh, uh, we exploited flow cytometry to, to do that. Uh, as you have already heard probably many times during the course, uh, you can use um, uh, physical parameters uh, forward and side scatter uh, to gate on, on your cells and eliminate the breeze. Then there are different strategies to identify single cells and uh, uh, eliminate the doublets. We normally use uh, the height against the width of uh, uh, the side scatter. Then to have a cleaner um, staining, we also yeah, cleaner analysis. We also stain uh, for a live dead with a live dead uh, dye, and we get on on live cells. So as uh, Lara mentioned before, uh, uh, the this dye penetrate inside the cells and so give a strong um, signal only on on dying cells. And then going back to the uh, physical parameters, so we can also identify lymphocytes and monocytes, eventually granulocytes even higher uh, on, on these cells. So gating on, on the monocyte population, then uh, we stained, uh, uh, we received 14 and 16 to identify monocytes. And here uh, we uh, consider monocytes, so the, the entire population that uh, 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 expressed uh, uh, any combination of, 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 of uh, po any positive combination of the two markers. But eventually you can also identify uh, classical monocytes as CD14 uh, positive, uh, uh, intermediate and, and alternative monocytes based on, on, the, combina on the combination of uh, uh, the staining of, of these two parameters. Uh, on the lymphocytes gates, instead, we can identify uh, B lymphocytes as uh, CD19 positive, and eventually you can further clean your gating by eliminating uh, uh, eventual uh, um, contaminants of uh, CD56 positive and CD3 positive uh, cells. Uh, while from the CD1914 double negative population, then we could identify T lymphocytes as uh, CD3 positive, uh, CD56 uh, uh, negative. And then we also identified this population of uh, CD3 positive, uh, CD56 uh, positive cells. These are often referred as NKT like cells, uh, but we preferred to. Um, to keep this nomenclature because uh, uh, the real invariant NKT cells are actually not in this, uh, in this population, which mostly uh, contains instead uh, some uh, highly cytotoxic uh, CD8 uh, T, and T cells and, and probably gamma delta T cells. Um, uh, then from the CD3 negative population, uh, we uh, uh, could identify natural killer cells based on the staining uh, with the uh, CD56 and uh, CD16. And again, here we consider all the, the entire population expressing uh, either uh, uh, one or both these two markers, but in principle, you can distinguish also some uh, CD56 uh, DIM, uh, uh, CD16 positive cytotoxic NK or uh, CD56 uh, bright uh, cyto cytokine producing NK cells. Uh, and finally, from T lymphocytes, uh, we could also distinguish uh, 
CD8 and CD4 T cells. And this, uh, I want to, to remind you that this has been done in a single staining. So uh, by using uh, uh, the uh, fax symphony, for instance, you can measure many parameters uh, at the same time. And in this case, uh, uh, we use the 1820 color uh, staining mix. Uh, going back to, to our patient cohorts, uh, what uh, we observed was essentially a broad immune remodeling of the uh, immune population in, in the peripheral blood uh, of the patients. And especially in patients with a mild disease during the infection, we observed a strong increase in the frequency of uh, natural killer cells. Uh, while uh, in patients with a severe disease, we observed uh, an, increase in the, in a, an increase in the frequency of monocytes uh, and uh, uh, a reduction of uh, CD3, CD56 uh, double positive cells, and also of uh, T lymphocytes that was uh, uh, mostly confined to the CD8 T cells. And since uh, uh, CD8 T lymphocytes actually uh, were shown to be the, the most affected uh, population in patients uh, uh, with severe disease, uh, we focused uh, on, on this population. And uh, uh, based on the staining, uh, on the combinatorial staining of uh, CD45 RO and CCR7, we could identify uh, some subpopulation like uh, naive, central memory, effector memory, and terminally dif differentiated uh, uh, T cells. Uh, moreover, uh, using uh, intracellular cytokine staining, we uh, on on uh, on cells that were stimulated with uh, PMA ionomycin that are strong stimuli to activate uh, the signaling downstream the, the TCR, we could also evaluate the production of interferon gamma of these cells. So essentially the, the factor capacity of these cells. And what we observed that the, uh, was that the um, reduction uh, uh, in uh, CD8 T cells was uh, uh, restricted to the factor memory compartment. And this was also mirrored by uh, an increase in the relative frequency of uh, naive T cells. And moreover, we also found that uh, the, the factor capacity, so that the functionality of these cells was reduced in patients with severe disease because their ability to produce interferon gamma was strongly impaired. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, um, let's say, one of the part of, of the work where we exploited the uh, flow cytometry. Actually, we also looked at uh, many other parameters like uh, uh, the different subset of uh, CD4 T cells and uh, uh, the different uh, uh, class of memory B cells and so on. But uh, uh, now I would like to, to also to tell you something about the, the single cell uh, sequencing data that we produced. Uh, as I mentioned before, we could obtain the, uh, we could obtain from uh, um, for our T cells a uh, meshed information of transcriptional data and also on, on the TCR uh, sequence of uh, the TCR receptor sequence of these cells. And uh, we wanted to focus especially on the um, uh, expanded clones, so TCR clones, because these are those proliferating uh, most likely in response to, to some activation that in this context uh, could be uh, the infection from SARS-CoV-2. And what we found was that uh, uh, CD8 T lymphocytes from patients either with mild or severe disease had a, a strong uh, clonal expansion, both compared to healthy donors, but also compared to CD4 T cells. Um, and essentially, we found that uh, uh, this clonal expansion was uh, restricted to a factor subset, CD8 T cell subset, uh, while in, in naive uh, uh, T cells, uh, essentially, it was uh, uh, almost undetectable. Um, then we also wanted to prove that uh, uh, actually this expanded clonotype uh, that we identified by uh, single cell sequencing uh, uh, were somehow enriched or contained uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2-specific T-cells. 
And to, the, to, to, to prove that, uh, we generated some antigen-specific uh, uh, T-cell uh, uh, population and then verified the presence of uh, uh, the, the T-cell clones we identified by, uh, by single-cell sequencing in these antigen-specific uh, populations. So how to generate antigen-specific T-cells? Uh, it's, uh, um, let's say, easy for, for those who are used to do that, but uh, the, uh, the protocol is, is quite straightforward. So we take um, uh, monocytes as antigen-presenting cells. We incubate these monocytes with, uh, with an antigen. In this case, we used uh, uh, some subunits of the spike and the nucleoprotein. Uh, in the meantime, we, uh, we stain our T lymphocytes with cell trace violet, which is a, a dye which um, uh, uh, stain uh, all the proteins on the cell surface. And uh, uh, what is uh, nice uh, for, uh, in this system is that uh, uh, in the moment the uh, T cells start to proliferate, they will dilute uh, uh, the, uh, the dye in the uh, uh, in the divided uh, cells he generates. Uh, so we added uh, uh, EncoCulture, these cell trace violet stain, stained T cells with the antigen loaded uh, monocytes for about a week. And after a week, again, we uh, took advantage, advantage of flow cytometry to identify cell trace violet uh, uh, negative T cells, which are those who uh, uh, proliferated and cell trace violet positive that instead didn't proliferate. And uh, we could also sort uh, uh, the, uh, the cells of interest. At the same time, uh, we also co-stained uh, uh, after disco culture T cells uh, uh, with some activation induced markers. So these are molecules which are upregulated on the surface of T cells upon activation like uh, CD25 and ICOS. And uh, as you can see here, uh, we have a, a strong upregulation of these markers compared to our uh, negative control and also uh, an increase in the frequency of cell trace violet negative uh, uh, cells. Uh, so uh, once we, uh, we did this uh, 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 co-culture, we uh, isolated, we sorted out the two population for each uh, antigen, cell trace violet positive and negative, and we expanded them uh, with allogeneic irradiated feeders and phytohemagglutinin, uh, which are strong uh, uh, mitogenic stimuli to let uh, the cell proliferate in the presence of uh, uh, interleukin-2, uh, which is uh, a necessary uh, survival and proliferation factor for, for T cells. And this uh, expansion was essentially to have enough material uh, to perform our experiment because uh, uh, from this sorting, uh, uh, we got essentially from uh, 50 to 500 cells. So uh, it was not much to work with. So after three, four weeks of, of expansion, when, when cells uh, uh, go back to the resting state, so they stop to proliferate, we extracted the, the RNA and also set up a method uh, in the lab to uh, um, uh, to find by qPCR, to, to um, uh, identify by qPCR specific uh, TCR sequences. And I, I cannot go uh, too much in detail in, in this method because it would take quite some time. Uh, but essentially what you see in these plots down here is that uh, uh, when you see uh, a, a white bar, it means uh, that uh, this clone was uh, only in the cell trace violet positive, so in the non-specific population, uh, while uh, the, the uh, black or dark gray bar uh, means that uh, this clone is also found in the, uh, in the antigen specific population. And uh, as you can see here, uh, we, we observe that uh, uh, although we cannot identify all the uh, TCR sequences that we found uh, by uh, uh, single cell sequencing method in, in these uh, uh, this antigen specific populations. In, in this case, uh, we could find the four out of uh, the six we, uh, we investigated. 
so 75%, though the numbers are, are pretty small. But this supported the, the idea that the clonally expanded clones that uh, we identify by single cell uh, sequencing techniques are uh, actually enriched in SARS-CoV-2 specific uh, uh, T cell populations. Uh, going back to the uh, sequencing data, uh, what uh, we also observed was that uh, uh, there was one of the factor population, uh, in particular these uh, producing runtime K, that was more expanded uh, uh, after the resolution of the infection, both in, my, in patients with mild and, and severe diseases. And uh, um, what is interesting is that by looking at the uh, transcriptional uh, features of, uh, uh, of these uh, cells and comparing them uh, with uh, uh, what was known from the literature by gene set enrichment analysis. So these are analysis where you compare a, a set of genes that comes from your population of interest with um, uh, known or published data of, of uh, uh, population with defined phenotypes. And what we found was that uh, actually both the granzyme K and B producing T cells are effector CD8 T cells, as you can see here. But actually the granzyme K producing one add also some uh, features of uh, memory T cells while uh, uh, the granzyme uh, uh, B positive were uh, even more uh, effect or more terminal effectors. And when we compared again uh, with, in a similar analysis, uh, um, uh, the transcriptional profile of uh, uh, granzyme K uh, positive uh, T cells, uh, we found that uh, uh, there was uh, a similarity uh, with the uh, genes expressed by a memory precursor uh, in, in a mouse model of uh, uh, LCMB uh, acute infection. So to further support uh, the, the hypothesis that uh, uh, this granzyme K uh, producing CD8 T lymphocytes may be uh, memory precursor uh, T cells, we uh, went and, and looked in two of the patients we analyzed the presence of uh, um, uh, these clones 10 months after uh, the infection, the SARS-CoV-2 infection was resolved. Uh, what we, you can see in this plot is that uh, the clones that uh, uh, were coming from the granzyme K producing uh, uh, population that are depicted here in, in uh, um, brown and green uh, were maintained uh, uh, 10 months post-infection in a frequency that was higher compared uh, to, the to the clones coming from the granzyme B producing uh, population. Uh, so to, to conclude uh, what uh, uh, we can uh, uh, say about uh, the immune response uh, uh, to SARS-CoV-2 uh, is that, uh, so something is, is, is known from, from um, the rich literature from the last uh, year and a half. So we know that SARS-CoV-2 infection is uh, usually resolved in, in 10, 20 days. Uh, the, the pathology uh, is uh, uh, mostly uh, resulting from the ability of SARS-CoV-2 to evade the type 1 uh, interferon-mediated response, uh, which can result in, in a temporal dysregulation of the immune response, and also so affects not only uh, the, the control by, by the innate immunity, but also by the adaptive immunity. We know that uh, uh, coordinated B and T cell immune responses are uh, the best uh, uh, option to fight and control uh, uh, this infection. And there are also um, data supporting that actually T cells are even more important than B cells in, in keeping control of the infection. And uh, what we observed in our study was that uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection induces a broad remodeling, remodeling of uh, uh, circulating immune population, uh, especially in patients with a severe disease, uh, where we observed a strong reduction in the frequency of effect of memory T lymphocytes and also an impaired ability of producing uh, uh, interferon gamma. Uh, we found that CD8 T lymphocytes are highly uh, chronically expanded in patients uh, uh, with COVID-19, both in patients with mild and severe disease. Uh, 
uh, we demonstrated that uh, these clonally expanded T lymphocytes are enriched uh, in uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, specific uh, T cells. And also uh, we provided evidence that um, uh, this granzyme K producing CD8 uh, T cell population is the one likely going to establish the immunological memory against uh, the pathogen. With this, I would like to thank the people involved in the project, uh, and um, uh, which was really uh, almost an institute effort, uh, especially from the lab of uh, Sergio Bignani and Renata Grifantini. And uh, thank you for the attention and happy to take uh, any questions.